Hi, I'm John Horan, consultant with Walters Clear Financial Services. This morning's breakfast briefing was on the new Bribery Act and the, and the idea of bribery and corruption in the UK. Our distinguished panel of speakers were Elizabeth Robinson, Susanna Coughlin, Steve Locke and Bimal Shah. At the end of the breakfast meeting, I had the opportunity to individually ask them some significant questions relating to the new legislation. Elizabeth, with the new Bribery Act, uh, a lot of firms are very concerned with the issues surrounding entertainment and they're afraid of falling foul of the legislation as a result of that. What's your take on that? My take on that issue is that business needs to continue with its monitoring of gifts and hospitality in a sensible way that's friendly to business um, to ensure that they keep transparent and contemporaneous records and essentially to make sure that uh, they know what's going on in their business but not to overreact and not to prevent what's legitimate entrepreneurial activity. Because so you feel that entertainment is a perfectly legitimate method of winning business? It's a perfectly legitimate me uh, method, proportional uh, entertainment, business development, and certainly the Serious Fraud Office and the government have made it clear that the intention of this Act is not to interfere with that type of activity. Susanna, one of the issues with the New Bribery Act is firms are worried when an investigation takes place. What, what are they going to be asked for? What, what are the things that they should focus on in making sure that they've got their procedures right? I mean, in any investigation, there's a huge amount of data that typically ends up being gathered. If you have a real corruption issue that needs to be looked into, there'll be a process of reviewing the documentary evidence, of interviewing witnesses, and so on. And that really needs to be done so that the company can properly understand the facts before they make a decision about how they're going to handle that, how they're going to deal with the regulator, how they're going to deal with law enforcement. But in addition, a key part of that will be demonstrating what the control environment was in place within the company at the time. Um, and whether, for example, the employees who paid the bribe um, were properly trained not to do so, uh, whether they were aware of the company's code of conduct and so on. And all of that is an important uh, sort of mitigation step in terms of the company establishing it has a defence, whether um, under the uh, corporate offence when the Bribery Act is brought into force, or indeed even under the current regime, um, there'll still be a great deal of interest in what the company's control environment was and whether it can document and demonstrate that. It can be difficult because investigations can take place um, into events that took place a very long time ago. There have been a number of high-profile corruption cases recently in the news um, that stretch back to for 10 or even 20 years. Um, so again, it is the importance of not only having procedures and training, but also documenting that and keeping records of that so that if a problem arises in the future one can point to what was in place at the company at that point in time. Steve, obviously with the new Bribery Act coming into force in the United Kingdom, there is a lot of concerns around the idea of multinationals. How are they going to implement the Act in, in practice where they have subsidiaries or partner, partner companies in other countries? I think the key to us is, one, making sure we understand what the businesses do to an absolute depth of detail in all the jurisdictions we work. And the second part of that is to look at the jurisdictions themselves and think about the risks they face from a corruption point of view. If we put those two things together, we've then got a much better idea of the risks we face in those jurisdictions, and then we can start thinking about controls and culture. But if we don't understand what we do and we don't understand the risk in those jurisdictions, you know, we won't get very far. Just very much know your business. It's know your business, it's know your jurisdiction, and it's absolutely getting out the outliers to the absolute extent of the business to find out what exotic things you do in exotic places. So Bimmel, with the new Bribery Act coming in, what do you think is the most important thing firms can do to ensure they don't fall foul of the legislation? I always think of um, the key item that will make a difference. So if you focus on one thing that can make a difference, what would it be? To me that's always going to be training. There's different types of controls, you can detect things after the event, but yeah. What can prevent that happening? Training. So culturally, the message needs to be driven from top down. Then employees need to engage at the right level to understand how they can make it work in real life. The type and methods of training need to be different. So the standard types of training, which is computer-based training, which needs to be complemented via some form of face-to-face -face training that's quite interactive. We only remember certain messages, and it's those final messages that we put into practice in real world. So if we can spend our time appropriately on training, we'll get the most rewards.